Uh, what I wanted to show you today is um, some real cheap, free actually, ways you can uh, plant some of your street side water harvesting basins or other uh, water harvesting earthworks or installations where you have planted the rain and you are now ready to plant some plants. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how you can, especially in the rainy season right now when the soil's really moist, got a good rain last night, um, got a lot of little seedlings popping up uh, from some of the desired native plants, and going to show you how we can transplant uh, those native plants. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a point of view. Okay, here we've got a street side water harvesting basin built by some volunteers. Water comes down the street gutter and then enters via the existing dip in the curb where there's a driveway. Um, water goes on in, fills the whole thing up. Once it's filled, surplus water backs up on itself and the excess or surplus continues down to the next basin and the next. Okay, well, what we got here is, uh, this was done by volunteers, um, and we don't have as much desired vegetation as would be optimal. So there's some bare spots, it'd be great to plant some stuff. So uh, here in the bottom of the basin, we've got a great uh, desert honeysuckle. These things are awesome. They can get uh, even buried in sediment and they'll regrow through it and they'll reseed, but they're perfect for the bottom zone of the basin. Then we also have these planting terraces along the top, but there's some bare spots there. Um, there had been a plant here, a Chuparosa, but it was um, lost in the drought. We had the record driest year, driest year on record last year, um, and uh, didn't make it. So we're gonna just make, we just made a quick little basin here. So um, it's like a basin within a basin. So more water will collect around the plant we're gonna transplant. So I'm just gonna make a little hole here for what we're gonna, um, for the transplant uh, of the little seedling we're about to get. And now let's go get that. I'm gonna walk across the street. There's a chuparosa plant, desired plant right there. And uh, there's some little seedlings come up next to it. So we're gonna go get it. Okay, right here, got a little chuparosa seedling. Now, how do I know that's a chuparosa? Chuparosa seedling. Well, um, I've, I'm always looking at plant books and going to botanical gardens and going through our neighborhood where we've got plant identification signs so I can um, look at the sign, see what the plant is, look at the plant. Um, but it's also a lot easier to identify a mature plant rather than a seedling, especially when it's flowering. So um, what I would look to here is there's the mother plant from which the seed came. So um, I'd want to look at its leaf structure. Um, you know, it's not a jagged leaf, it's a smooth leaf. You can see where the leaflet comes off from the stem. Um, and uh, since I've positively identified the mother plant, I look, oh wow, this looks to be the same leaf structure. I bet this is it. So i um, gonna give it a go. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is pull the mulch away so I can get to the seedling and more easily use the shovel to uh, dig up as whole a root ball as possible. I wanna keep the roots as intact as possible when I transplant. Oh, and cool, look at this. Check out all these little mushrooms coming up. Nice. So this is in a street side water harvesting basin. So we are maximizing the moisture of the soil and all, uh, but with the harvest of the street runoff. Oh, and check this out. This is a piece of the mulch. Look at all that white fuzzy stuff on there. That's a mycelium, beneficial uh, mycelium fungi that is just, uh, chowing down on and helping decompose the dry carbon material, the mulch, which is just cut up prunings from the tree above. It's this wonderful nutrient cycle. It's creating a more fertile sponge-like soil that sequesters carbon, absorbs the moisture, reduces downstream flooding, grows more plants, more resources. Okay. 
Now, um, there's pretty thick mulch in here because basically my rule for thickness of mulching is I only apply a mulch um, as thick as can be fully saturated in an average rainstorm. And because the street side basin gets uh, not just direct rainfall, but also um, harvested runoff, which you call run on, which is right on, um, we can do a thicker mulch because there's more water to saturate more mulch. Okay, so now that I've got that clear, relatively clear of the mulch, what I'm gonna do is take this little garden shovel and I'm gonna go around the seedling. Oh, and here's a little thing, the, you know, the, the smaller the seedling when you transplant, in some ways, the more likelihood of the success because it's easier to get the whole root ball. Okay. Now, the reason I'm going all the way around is I don't know how far the roots have extended yet, um, but I, I want to try and grab a whole root ball without stuff breaking away. So um, now I get under the whole thing and sweet, got it. Okay, so now I go across the street and uh, I'll try planting it in this other basin where it's needed. Now I took this seedling out, um, have good dense vegetation in that basin. So didn't have a bunch of, you know, bare plantable spots like this basin does. Okay, so now I'll come over here and turn around so I'm not kneeling in the ant hill. Okay, now look at the size of that root ball. My hole's not quite big enough. So, dig out a little more. Oh yeah, you dig with a shovel or your hand. The nice thing with the hand is then you get the dirt under the fingernails and people are like, ooh, that, that guy's a gardener. Yeah, he gets his hand in the dirt. You see, he, he is sexy. <laughs> he is fertile. Okay, so now I just drop it in. Okay, and then I'm gonna push soil around that root ball before I take the shovel out. Try and keep the root ball as intact as possible. And uh, I don't want to have any, you know, gaps, air gaps in there. So I'm gonna compress this a little, my fingers. Okay, and then I'm gonna extend, expand this basin a little bit. Hey, sorry if the camera's jumping around. It's kind of hard to do all this while holding the camera with one hand and doing work with the other. So get a little jumpy. But hey, it's real, this is real life stuff. Okay, so there we go. We've got, uh, a little donut shaped basin. What do I mean by that? Uh, it's as though you took a donut and you pressed it around the, uh, the plant that you just planted. It creates this donut like depression and that's gonna hold more water uh, to help get this plant established, both direct rainfall or if I give it any supplemental irrigation. Okay, now the other thing I can do to enhance its chance of success is I'm gonna grab some mulch, fine mulch, from the basin here, and I'm gonna spread it around. This'll help reduce the uh, drying out of the soil. Okay, if we have, you know, bare exposed soil, it's gonna get a lot hotter, it's gonna dry out a lot quicker. So doing the fine mulch, um, we're, we're better off. The other nice thing about this fine mulch is it's gonna help um, also protect the little donut basin. I mean, okay, so we're good. Now, um, what I'm gonna show you is uh, a little cheap irrigation bucket you can make to give this thing some supplemental water. Like let's say if we don't get any more rain, okay? I'm gonna turn the camera off and get that set up. So here um, we've got a little irrigation bucket. So uh, just a typical four gallon plastic bucket. You get a five gallon, those work too. 
and then drilled a little eighth inch hole uh, on the side, the bottom. So then I can go to the cistern here, turn off the water, fill this thing up with some captured rainwater, and uh, then you can see it's starting to come out, just like a drip irrigation emitter, okay? Um, I'll point that dripping water to the plants as I wait for this thing to fill up. Now you can get these, uh, these plastic buckets for free um, from uh, dumpsters of donut shops or go inside to the, the donut shop, ask if they've got them, um, you get them at bakeries and so forth, uh, a number of food entities. This particular bucket was from Elastomeric Paint, so I went to a solar contractor because they're always putting up solar panels on uh, roofs painted with uh, elastomeric paint. So they've got tons of these buckets I get from them for free. Um, so that way we don't buy any virgin plastic. Don't introduce any more plastic to the world. Got enough of that crap. Okay, so um, now this is pretty much full. You can see the higher the water level, the better the flow out of the little irrigation bucket. So I'm gonna turn off the cistern, carry this to the little seedling. So here, uh, I've placed the irrigation bucket beside the just transplanted uh, chuparosa seedling in the street side water harvesting basin. So all's good. It's key that you irrigate um, right after the transplant. That's when the plant is gonna be most stressed uh, and you wanna reduce that stress, okay? Start to give it a more pleasant microclimate to grow and thrive. Now it's ideal that we are doing this in the rainy season when soil is already really moist, a lot easy to, easier to get the seedling out and whatnot. Oh, and you can see, check it out. So the leaf's already drooping a bit. Yeah, it definitely got stressed. Um, if you can do this on an overcast day, even better than a fully sunny day. So um, I'm gonna have to watch this, see how the rain goes. Uh, might have to give it a fair amount of supplemental water over the next couple um, months. Now, one way you can do, uh, you can freely plant uh, without the need to irrigate like this, typically, is you can plant from seed. I've got a different video on that. You just plant the seed direct in these water harvesting basins. You do that at the beginning of the rainy season, and uh, if there's enough rain for the seed to germinate, hot dog, you're probably going to have success, and your chances of success are even greater if it's in these water harvesting basins. For more information, check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, available direct from me at deep discount at harvestingrainwater.com. Also check out our neighborhood efforts um, in this neighborhood uh, native food forestry at Dunbar Spring neighborhoodforesters.org, or you can just simplify it and look up neighborhoodforesters.org. And uh, here's the logo, yeah! Oh. And uh, hey, think about uh, becoming uh, neighborhood forester. Uh, a whole part of our program is, uh, you know, we have uh, workshops and a lot of in free information on our website and stuff. Our whole intent is to um, help train up citizen foresters, the people that live, work, and play next to these plants and are most likely to love them and care for them. And uh, we're super into uh, helping every neighborhood set up its own neighborhood foresters group. All right. Thanks for watching.